Western Oregon sports fans, and welcome to the season end edition of Wolves Weekly. I'm joined today by head football coach Arn Ferguson. Coach Ferguson, season sure goes by quick, doesn't it? Felt like just yesterday you were doing two a days. Yep. In the college football and the playing 11 games, I mean, you'll have time to breathe and to, to have that go by. Uh, seems like yesterday we we're just starting. Uh, two days, and now, now it's our last game. But to finish playing for a conference championship, even though we fell uh, five points short, um, is very rewarding. And to our team continuing to get better, um, we felt our last game against Central Washington, our defense did a lot of really nice things. Um, the run defense against a very good running back um, was extremely successful. Um, and they're a very good offensive team. And then um, also, uh, our D-line really felt they played the best game of their season. And offensively, we were able to score some points, but we just ain't, weren't able to, to get those extra yards that we needed and be able to take care of the football like we needed in, in a big game like that. Talk to me a little bit about that defense. They really kept you in there and gave you a chance to win this game. Yeah. We see here you guys stopping the run, but it was the individuals that offered that defensive line play, and Caleb Singleton had a big week too. Yeah. First of all, uh, the first time we played Central Washington Battle in Seattle, uh, between O and D line, pretty much a, a stalemate. Um, then you, the second time, our D line really came through, um, and we felt they dominated the football game with good linebacker play. And then also our two safeties, um, Caleb Singleton and, and Bryce Pila, are the two best safeties in our conference. We feel uh, you saw Bryce Pila have a, a big hit there, and actually um, broke a bone in, in the receivers. The skull a little bit where it's a big time blow even though he's trying to make a play on the football and uh, to, to see both those safeties play like they can and then also our corners come up and, and make plays. Um, you know, Corey Bean you see right here um, gives the hands to our running back we're able to get positive yards um, we just weren't able to do that consistently we know they are able to have talent you know Trevor Gates uh, able to make plays um, but just the consistency of our offense and taking care of the football wasn't up to the level that we like it to be, especially in a big game like that. And you did have some good performances by your mm -hmm. wide receivers. Oh, yeah. Corey Bean getting the ball. Mario Ballard came through with 107 yards. Yeah. And um, Trevor Gates with 104. Yeah. And both those guys really took with one completely on the outside, um, gave him some opportunities, and really could have a couple more. I'm not so sure he could have had 200 yards, you know, a couple of balls that just didn't come down with uh, you'd like to. And then Trevor Gates, when they expanded to our outside receivers, and also because of Justin Orr's talent also, you saw the stages expand, and it's opened up uh, Trevor Gates. And, and Corey did a nice job of, of, of giving the ball to the easy throw and making things it's just that consistency against an extremely good defense in such Washington. And you were also able to get a little offensive spark from your special teams mm -hmm. there with Lucas Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. um, he had a very good job in the, in the return game. And he was able to earn GNAC Special Teams Player of the Week. Yes. Talk to me a little, about, a little bit about his performance. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I can't go without saying um, Caleb Singleton had 17 tackles. Um, huge game and ended up being the GNAC Co-Defensive Player of the Week. And you see him right here just making plays all over. Um, the young man came in and really progressed. And we hope he has a future going on playing someplace. Um, but he has that talent and that drive. And really to see that. And Lucas Gonzalez had a 64-yard return, um, which really got our offense in a good position. He's done that for the second half of the season on mm -hmm. and uh, ended up being GNAC Player of the Week. And in the last four games, we've had somebody as a GNAC Player of the Week, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, uh, because of the level of their play, especially at the end of the season, which is really rewarding. And I know you probably, football is the ultimate team sport. You can't mm -hmm. focus on that one. What does it mean for you, you know, you, you as, a, as a coach and the rest of the team mm -hmm. when you have an individual get awarded that one? Yeah. Do the rest of the teammates take pride in that oh, type yeah. of stuff? It, you know, I'll take special teams example. I mean, you have 10 other guys going through their assignment and blocking, but also you have Lucas Gonzalez seeing that hole and hitting it too. So uh, it's really a group effort, um, both offense and defense and special teams for any one individual on um, either side or, or position to, to get an award. And you talk about you, have, you had a chance for the GNAC title this weekend. Tell me a little bit about what it can mean for you as a coach, meaning that every snap still means something. You didn't have any games that your season wasn't done after week eight or something like that. And, you know, our season was, was everything was tight. Every play really mattered. Um, and to see our guys uh, play um, those tight, close ball games, especially going down to Humboldt, and win the close ball game there, and really a group effort of offense, defense, and special teams. And we see DeMario 
here against Humboldt. Um, so you, you see all those guys really do, playing at a high level in critical situations. It's extremely important. Good. You know, Humboldt's a very good team. End up ranked 10th in the nation. Um, and then also Central Washington's a really good team. And seeing our, our team play their best football towards the end is very rewarding. And uh, speaking of these highlights, as I'm seeing them right here, Demario Ballard and mm -hmm. stuff, you guys had a high level of talent this year. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Caleb Singleton, Demario Ballard, and Justin Orr, who you believe might get a look at well, possibly well, playing uh, another all game. All indications that the NFL scouts come through, and we've had quite a few, um, really feel that they'll have an opportunity to go and play. Um, and it's not that they played as individuals, they stood out. Um, when they were able to make those type of plays as someone that might have the, the size, the speed um, to go on and the skill level to go on and play. So we're very exciting. You know, we've had guys in the past, uh, Kevin Boss had that type of interest, uh, Jeff Charleston had that type of interest. Both are, are starting in the NFL. Um, I don't want to jinx these three. We just know that they have an opportunity to, to, uh, for NFL teams to look at them and see what they can do. Well, even besides not just saying a jinx or anything, these gentlemen were all recognized for their talent and their skills that they displayed this year as all three of them were honored as first team all conference performance yes. yeah. performers. You also had Jason Slowey earn mm -hmm. it at right tackle, Lucas Gonzalez as a punt returner, mm -hmm. John Bentham mm -hmm. as a defensive lineman, and I'm forgetting one other one, Bryce Pila Bryce right Pila. in there yes. as well. Yeah. So that that's a high level of selections on that first team. There's only twenty four total spots and you guys were able to grab up seven of them. Yeah. And and on that we really look at the first and second team. Uh, these guys are very deserving of those honors. Anytime you have half of them on first team, half of them on second team, um, is very rewarding because there is not a lot of spots available. And to have also the, the co-player of the year defensively yes. um, also says something about the defense and what the impact he made on our defense. And that is a very positive note. But you as a coach and being that we are here as part of a university is not all focused just for what the accomplishments on, are yeah. on the field. One of the most interesting things and one of the biggest accomplishments to me during the 2010 season is Western Oregon was able to earn 15 of the 31 all academic spots the conference gave away. Yeah, and you know, Tanner Grover led the way. Um, he's from Alaska, he came here as a freshman. Um, he's a junior right now. Um, <clears throat> I believe he had a 3.76 if I understand correctly. Um, but 15 of those guys um, really balance their academics and athletics along with other guys on our team and that is their number one goal uh, for our program is that they do well academically and number two is actually their family number three is football so those guys are able to balance at a division two level and that's really why they came here because the university has offered so many uh, more programs academically than they did let's say 15 years ago um, and especially our sciences you know you have michael petrovich you know, Levi Smith, the you know, sciences are doing extremely well, which is a very, very demanding program. You mentioned two other people. I, I just want to make sure we say uh, three-time recipients of the All-Conference mm -hmm. Award, which is the most you can get, Jake Zutenhorst mm -hmm. and Onus Robert. Yep. Contributing yes. members of the team oh, for very, all the years. Yeah, played very well. You know, Jake Zutenhorst got hurt, which really hurt our offense a little bit as he's a big 6'5 receiver. You know, and Onus, um, actually the week going into this week, um, broke his foot a little bit, but was able to be... Uh, to able to play on it, and, and they all are people that are on that academic list and do well also in the football field too. Um, and for this, hopefully this will be the third year we can win that award with our whole team. Um, and there's not anybody anywhere close to having 15 guys on that uh, academic football-wise that we have. And it was very impressive, and you hate to talk about the seniors because mm -hmm. you have so much admiration for them for putting in so much time here but at the same time you also hate to see them go right. and I know unfortunately you're going to lose some individuals and we have a couple clips here that just talk about what West Oregon football has meant to them and it's not just a matter of what goes on between the lines it, it is a family and so we want to talk about Caleb Singleton. Here. I'm going to remember the most uh, friendships that I've uh, built here and um, winning as a program. Playing football at Western has meant everything to me uh, I love everybody I played with, everybody I met here, and I'll never forget the experience Western Oregon has given me. If you want new facilities, actually, and uh, if you want to just make friends, if you want just guys that you're going to take with you for the rest of your life, come here. It's, uh, I mean, the weather, it's kind of crappy, but I've made friends that I, I love for the rest of my life. And, and those were three key contributors for your team this year. We saw that first clip there from Caleb Singleton, huh. but you also had Justin Orr mm -hmm. and Jared Vincent out there. And just talking about, you could see it in their eyes, how much this 
their time here at Western Oregon has meant to them? And all three of them came in as a freshman, redshirted, and then played all the way all their four years of eligibility. And uh, to see them really develop as, first of all, young men, um, and then also academically, then the last thing football-wise is very rewarding. And we've all appreciated being able to, the opportunity to watch them. The blood, sweat, and tears those guys have put in for over four years at this program. But there's also, you look a little bit towards the future with the end of this, this mm -hmm. last season, a little optimism to the future. We talked about Jason Slowey right there, mm -hmm. maybe one of the best tackles in the conference. Yeah. You also have Bryce Pila and another of them, other gentlemen come back. Talk to me a little bit about what your optimism for the future and some of the pieces we'll see returning. Yeah. Well, first of all, we have some 18 very quality seniors that are going to be hard to replace. Um, and then that's the first thing we have to address. And then our players that are on our program, um, you see them on first or second team all conferences. John Bentham, for example, a, a retro freshman DT, they need to get better to replace those seniors that, that are very significant in our development of our program, being seven and four, and be able to play for a conference championship the last game of the season. Um, so we definitely have to get on the road recruiting um, and develop. And we also feel that we have some pl players who are registered this year and also players didn't play as much that will really step in in those roles. But they're going to be tough roles to fill, obviously. We talked about how quick that off that in season goes. Well, coach, the off season goes even quicker. Yep. I'm sure you'll be back out there in no time at all, out of spring ball and getting these guys ready. Yep. So we just want to say thank you all year for joining us on Wolves Weekly and the opportunity to let everyone hear hear your words. And thank you all for watching Wolves Weekly throughout the season.